Hello and good day. I am your video lecturer for educational assessment. Today we will discuss topic 1 regarding assessment basics. Before we proceed, let us take a look at the learning outcomes for this video. By the end of this topic, you should be able to explain the general principles of assessment, differentiate the importance of aligning, misaligning assessments, learning objectives and instructional strategies, list the differences between formative and summative assessment, present examples of the kinds of activities that can be used to assess different types of learning objectives. The following phenomenon should be able to help you to see the differences among test, measurement and assessment or evaluation. Classroom teachers normally use a test, an instrument containing questions, to be solved by students. Measurement is done by counting the number of the correct responses obtained. Teachers then try to assess or evaluate or make a judgment whether the students need attention or not. Assessment inspires us to ask these hard questions. First, are we teaching what we think we are teaching? And second, are students learning what they are supposed to be learning? Assessment is a broad and rapidly growing field with a strong theoretical and empir empirical base. However, you don't have to be an assessment expert to employ sound practices to guide your teaching. We present to you the basic concepts to enable you to find answers for the above two questions. The basic concepts also enable you to become more systematic in your assessment planning and implementation and eventually try to find the best possible answers to the above questions. Assessment should be more than merely a test at the end of instruction to see how students perform. Assessment should not merely be done to students, rather it should also be done for students in order to guide and enhance their learning. It is important for us to look at some basic principles of assessment before we can discuss any further about assessment. The major principles are, first, what is to be assessed has to be clearly specified. Second, good assessments use multiple methods, for example, multiple choice questions, MCQ, essay questions, project work and observation techniques. Third, there must be a close match between the intended learning outcomes and types of assessment tasks to be used. For example, essay tests to measure the ability to organize and express ideas. And fourth, assessment must be aligned to the instruction. From the principles of assessment, we can see that just an assessment impacts student learning and motivation, it also influences the nature of instruction in the classroom. So let's see. If we want to achieve what we are supposed to achieve, we should make an effort to align assessments, set learning objectives and design easy and understandable instructional strategies. Assessments should reveal how well students have learned what we want them to learn, while instruction ensures that they learn it. For this to occur, assessments, learning objectives and instructional strategies need to be closely aligned so that they reinforce one another. To ensure that these three components of your lessons are aligned, teachers should ask themselves the following questions. Firstly, learning objectives. What do I want students to know how to do when they leave this course? Secondly, assessments. What kinds of tasks will reveal whether students have achieved the learning objectives I have identified? And thirdly, instructional strategies. What kind of activities in and out of class will reinforce my learning objectives and prepare students for assessments? What if the components of a course are misaligned? Clearly defined and explained learning objectives enable students to focus their learning activities. If assessments are misaligned with learning objectives or instructional strategies, what will happen? It can undermine both students' motivation and learning. For example, your assessment prepared is to measure students' ability to compare and critique the arguments of different authors, 
but you focus entirely on summarizing the arguments of different authors. Consequently, students do not learn or practice the skills to compare and evaluate that will be assessed. By now, you should have some knowledge on assessment and how it affects teachers' teaching and students' learning. It is time for us to get to know the different types of assessment. There are two types of assessments, which are first, formative assessments and second, summative assessment. Formative assessment. Formative assessment is to monitor student learning to provide ongoing feedback that can be used by teachers to improve their teaching and by students to improve their learning. More specifically, formative assessments help students identify their strengths and weaknesses and target areas that needed to be worked on and recognize students' weaknesses and address problems immediately. Examples of formative assessments include asking students to draw a concept map in class to represent their understanding of a topic and submit one or two sentences identifying the main point of a passage. Summative assessment. Summative assessment is to evaluate students' learning at the end of an instructional unit by comparing it against some standard. Examples of summative assessments include a semester exam, a final project, and a research paper. Can you identify the difference between formative and summative assessment? The more we know about a student individually as they engage in the learning process, the better we can adjust the instruction to ensure that all students continue to achieve by moving forward in their learning. Using this marks the end of this video lecture. Let's conclude the lessons with some statements on appropriate assessment. 1. Student learning styles vary widely and their strengths and challenges with respect to assessment vary as well. Teachers need to consider that variation as they choose assessments for their courses. What the teachers assess is what the students study, engage with, and explore in more depth. By starting with what we want students to know and be able to do, we can design and choose appropriate assessments to demonstrate the appropriate knowledge and skills we are aiming for them to learn. After analyzing students' achievements systematically, teachers should begin to see gaps in their teaching or the effectiveness of the assessments to measure student understanding. This is the time to modify the assessments and the instruction to better support student learning. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.